Assalamu alaikum. This is Mr. Case, and today we're going to be talking about one of the three great monotheistic religions of the world, Islam. Now, it was definitely a crossroads of three continents, Africa, Europe, and Asia. Where it's located is, the, uh, is in Arabia. Arabia is a peninsula in southwest Asia. And we begin to see the development of Islam um, as Bedouins begin to play an important part. Bedouins were folks that were nomads. They herded goats and sheep and they were grouped in uh, tribes and common ancestors um, in clans, C-L-A-N-S. And the Bedouins' ideal of courage and loyalty were definitely to family. Family is the important part. It's the glue that holds the society together. Well, um, oasis become very important. And an oasis is a place where there's a source of water. It might be a stream or it might be a, um, um, a spring that bubbles up out of the, the ground. It's a place that typically has a lot more vegetation than the desert area. And so after a couple generations, Bedouins began to settle down in a great way and live near these uh, water sources. Uh, being the crossroads of trades and ideas, the Arabian Peninsula is nonetheless a desert region that is connected by trade routes to the outside world. You're going to see trade routes go all the way to China, the Silk Road, and then it comes through India, comes through Arabi Arabia, and then over to Europe. Um, most folks traded spices and incense to the West, and the Arabs at a place and being the middlemen there. Important city, Mecca on the Arabian Peninsula. It's an important stop for religious pilgrims because of the house of uh, worship that's there called the Kaaba, K-A-A-B-A. -A -A. Um, they worship one God, Allah. It is not the same God of the Christians and Jews. Um, nonetheless, they are monotheistic like those other two religions. and. Uh, the people, people that believe in one God are called Hanifs, H-A-N-I-F-S. Okay, the story of Islam. Uh, we have a home slice by the name of Muhammad. He was born in Mecca, and uh, he had a rough childhood. Um, by age 25, he is married, and uh, his money problems are over because he marries a rich widow, Kadisha. By age 40, he begins hearing voices during his prayer time, and he becomes convinced that uh, he was the last prophet of Abraham and had to spread the teachings of one God, God called Allah. He believed that uh, he heard from Allah through the prophet, uh, uh, or through, from the archangel Gabriel. Um, these revelations are central to um, Islamic uh, theology. The word Islam itself means submission to Allah's will. That's all Islam means. Uh, a Muslim is someone who follows Islam. Um, back as late as the 1930s, they called them Mohammedans, someone who follows Muhammad. Um, Muslims, you will see, but it's all the same, same thing. Somebody who believes in one God. Um, important. Uh, part of the story is Muhammad was not well liked by the um, city fathers in Mecca because he told them that they needed to get rid of their religious trinkets and uh, worship only one God. Well, they were not about to do that because they were going to lose a uh, great source of revenue. So they kind of kicked him out of uh, Mecca and he went north to the city of Yathrib, Y-A-T-H-R-I-B, Yathrib. It's also known as Medina. Medina means the city of the prophets. So Medina and Yathrib are the same thing. And there he preaches to the Bedouin tribes there. And this is an important part in the story. The Hijra, the Hijra talks about the spread of Islam. He begins to preach to these Bedouin tribes and they believe in his message. So now he has a huge group of believers. He has a huge army and where do you think he goes next? You're right, he's going to return to his home. And long before he gets to Mecca, there, uh, 
there are people from Mecca that see a big cloud of dust and they know it's Muhammad coming back and with the Bedouins converting to um, Islam that huge army is now going to be able to take over Mecca they took Mecca without firing a shot they just he um, just Muhammad destroys all the idols burns them in a big fire and uh, it's there in the center of the holiest site of um, the Muslims in Mecca the Kaaba this big black stone that um, it was said that this fire burning all these uh, idols uh, took place um, just an overview of the beliefs and practices in Islam a good Muslim will follow the five pillars of faith they believe in only one God they do believe in good and evil each uh, person is responsible for their own um, actions that's an important thing they follow a holy scripture called the Quran at times it's spelled K-O-R-A-N it is like their type of Bible it has no similarities with the Christian Bible or the Jewish Torah but it is writings that, uh, Mo that were inspired by Muhammad okay the five pillars pillar holds up a house this holds up their um, their faith the first one is faith or witness w-i-t-n-e-s-s -E -S. they say every day there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his prophet uh, number two they pray five times daily um, facing Mecca eastward um, they also are um, if they're close enough to go to a house of prayer called a mosque they're to do that a mosque again is a house of prayer the giving of alms is charity it's aid to the poor through a special religious tax but you can give uh, money directly to poor people too and that would uh, satisfy that requirement and then lastly during the month of Ramadan R-A-M-A-D-A-N there's no food or drink that is uh, taken in during the daylight hours so just before the Sun comes up and just after the Sun goes down you eat and that's a month of um, restraint I'll say it that way and then the last one is called a Hajj it's a journey that is taken to Mecca at least once in your life if you're able financially to afford it and your health allows it um, now the question is what if I don't do these things well that's between you and Allah you're hoping that by doing these things Allah will be merciful to you and let you into paradise <clears throat> a Muslim's way of life um, there is no separation number one there's no separation their personal life is their religious life no separation between the two second one uh, believers follow the five pillars every day number three they're not allowed to eat um, certain foods that are prohibited like pork they're not allowed to drink alcohol and so they follow that daily now there's sources of authority <clears throat> it's Allah through um, the Archangel Gabriel G-A-B-R-I-E-L uh, if Gabriel sounds familiar um, he is uh, the archangel for um, in Christian uh, Bible and the Muslim or the um, Jewish Torah so we have some similarities between all three here the Quran is written only in Arabic uh, they believe that uh, God, uh, Allah does not hear your prayers unless you pray in Arabic so if you convert to Islam you have to take Arabic classes until recently the Quran was only written in Arabic now this word Sunnah uh, Sunnah just means Muhammad's example Muhammad set the example for how to live the best way to live and their body of law is called Sharia law it regulates um, one's daily life links to Judaism and Christianity uh, I just mentioned one with the Archangel Gabriel Muslims do believe in the concept of um, Messiah they believe that Allah is 
the same God that's worshipped in Judaism and Christianity, although the Jews and the Christians don't. Jesus is seen as a prophet, P-R-O-P-H-E-T. They, see, they saw he was a good man, a prophet, but the uh, Muslims do not see Jesus as Messiah or Christ or Savior. Um, but they do believe that Muhammad um, is the final um, prophet by the Muslims, and so he is considered higher than Jesus. Christians, Jews, and Muslims trace their origins um, back to uh, Father Abraham, good old Father Abraham. Who's your daddy? Well, the Muslims would say Abraham. The Jews would say, he's our daddy too. And the Christians would say, well, spiritually, he's our daddy too. All right, 10.1 in the books.